Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we're going to do a quick hit video, a late night insight on a house I have not talked about on the channel before. And I like wearing these type of fragrances to bed uh, because it's a great way to kind of get to know, you know, a house, the aesthetic, get to know what they're about, understand if it's a house that you want to kind of take the next step on. Do you want to buy more samples? Um, do you want to do as I do, not as I say, and blind buy some bottles, which you should never do. You should always sample first, but I do blind buy sometimes. Um, and, you know, this is actually a fragrance. Normally when I do these quick hit videos, these late night insight videos, whatever you want to call them, I uh, will usually only wear that fragrance to bed once, and that'll be like an early impression. This is an exception. I've actually had to test this three times. And the reason is there was something bothering me about this fragrance uh, in a good way, but it was something that was bothering me about this fragrance and I wanted to get it right. And I, and I think it clicked today. Um, and I said, you know what? I'm going to do this video today. I'm ready. And sometimes that's just how it goes. Normally there's not as much wearings as I've had with this one. So I feel like I really kind of know this fragrance already now. And the fragrance came out in 2016. It's a modern perfume, and you know me, normally modern scents don't impress me. This is a little bit of an exception. Actually, I think this house is an exception. I think this is a really underrated house, in my opinion. Uh, it's a house that doesn't get much love in Fragcom. Very few people talk about them, although they are out there and they are discussed. Um, it's almost like they're outcasts like they're on the periphery you know like they're not allowed to be um hyped for whatever reason they're just not expensive enough to be a frederick mall or roja or emwage and they are not cheap enough to be in cheapy lists so they, they don't have that exclusivity uh but i think the uh, quality of the ingredients are very good and the house is is called carner barcelona and the one we're going to talk about today is called Sandor 70s Eau de Parfum. This is a sample that was very kindly sent to me by one of you. You know who you are, one of my perfume god people. Thank you very much. Honestly, I mean, these videos would not be possible without your kindness and generosity. So thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, it really does make doing these videos for you guys. And it makes the channel just run so smooth. Um, and I have so many people. It's not just one. You know, when I say my perfume god people, there are some people that do want to remain anonymous and I want to respect their wishes, but I mean, I probably have more now that I can count on both hands that have been so kind to send me stuff. I mean, out of the goodness of their hearts, samples, some even full bottles, um, giant 10 ml decants and just so many amazing things. Um, so I really do feel blessed. I, I think I have the best uh, 2,400 su subscribers, you know, for someone starting out, this channel hasn't even been in existence a year. It's coming up on a year in a week or two, uh, very soon. I don't know what I'm going to do for the year anniversary, but if you guys have some ideas, do let me know. Um, but the fragrance we're going to talk about is from 2016 and it's called Sandor 70s. And I have more from this house that we will be able to talk about as well. I have Carner Queer, uh, which was sent to me by... Uh, Rich Bitch, he sent me a, a nice little sample, uh, so I'll talk about that one very soon. I have another one from this black label line, or whatever they call it. Um, and so it's a house that I'm kind of interested in. And you know, the perfumer on this one is uh, a perfumer that I've often said, man, I really wish they would give this guy a budget, you know, a bigger budget to work with, because he's a perfumer who worked for John Varvatos for most of his career. His name's Rodrigo Flores Rue, and he created some amazing perfumes for John Varvatos. He created the original John Varvatos in 2004, um, which is one of the earliest uses of Oud after M M7 by YSL in 2002. He created uh, then Vintage in 2006, which many people love this fragrance. I like it. I don't love it yet. It hasn't grown on me to that extent, although I need to give it more wears. I'm trying to wear more of my designers instead of just wearing niches all day. Today, my scent of the day was... Um, I have this decant of promise. I'm always worried about um, 
decants evaporating. So I have a full bottle of Promise. I showed it yesterday on my Frederick Mall Top 15 Ranked Family Portrait video. Go check that out. I also did an unboxing of a piece's uh, Noir piece. Go check that out. Um, but I'm always worried about evaporation. So I wore Promise today, and God, Promise is such a huge perfume. It's so amazing. I love it. I love everything about it. I love the green apple in the opening. I love the Cipriol. It's one of my favorite um, executions of Cipriol, and I love the Castorium. When that Castorium comes out in the dry down, it is amazing, and it's a complex fragrance. And one of the commenters was mentioning that it changes over the life of the perfume. It really does. Uh, not only does it change during the life of the perfume, but it changes during wears. So one wear, you may get this. The next wear, you may get this. The next wear, you may get this from it. And sometimes it's so drastic that you may not even think it's the same perfume. I mean, that happened to me once. Um, I heard it's happened multiple times to other people. So Promise is a very interesting fragrance. Is it synthetic? Hugely synthetic. I mean, one of the most synthetic smelling fragrances in my collection, and yet I absolutely love it. I love the way Dominique Ropion created the whole vibe. It's perfect as a Middle Eastern scent. When you want something that's just going to blow the doors off, Promise is, is amazing. Um, so Rodrigo Flores Rue did Sandor uh, 70. Excuse me. And it's classified as this spicy, woody fragrance. And let me tell you uh, what you will initially smell, spray. When you initially spray this, what you will get. I just did a fresh spray 15, 20 minutes ago. And um, maybe 30 minutes ago now. Um, so the opening, when, when, when the fragrance first hits your nose, you're going to get equal parts of woods, florals, and, and this tobacco. Okay? Those are what initially will come to your nose. Woods, florals, and tobacco. And if you are, um, you know, if you're someone that, um, if you're highly critical of wood notes, you know, if you're used to smelling Henley's Bloodline or something that has the most realistic uh, wood note you've ever smelled, you may initially smell this and go, you know, it's a little generic, it's a little synthetic, modern, woodsy, and it is. <clears throat> that is, to me, the one knock that you could um, bestow on a fragrance like Sandor 70s, because it does have this modern, woodsy feel, and yet the fragrance feels very vintage in vibe, and I'll talk about a vintage fragrance that is extremely sought after that it reminds me of. Actually, let me read you the blurb. Um... So it says, at the crest of Upper Barcelona, once a place to see and be seen, an iconic bar where the smoke of cigars flirted with the aristocratic leather armchairs. And I'm not going to go through the note listing here yet, but I will very soon. Um, so I want you to imagine this Triforce. Are anyone like a Nintendo Zelda fan? Remember the Triforce, the three parts um, of the tri of the triangle, the Triforce. Um, this one has that, and it's the woods, the florals, and the tobacco. And then what you're going to begin to get after the woods and florals and tobacco is you'll slowly start to realize that that floral element you're smelling. Yes, there's a little bit of rose. Yes, there's a little bit of jasmine, jasmine absolute, but. Uh, one of the leading florals, or the leading floral, I think I would say, to my nose is Osmanthus. And I've talked about Osmanthus before. I've done an entire video on the note of Osmanthus. You can go check that out under This Is Not A Top 10, the playlist. Um, and Osmanthus has slowly became one of my favorite florals. I love how it has this fruity, nectarine slash peachy vibe, but there's also this animalic feel that comes from Osmanthus. Um, and most importantly, there's this suede-like feel that comes from Osmanthus. It almost gives off this fruity, uh, animalic, suede-like vibe um, in, in a floral. And it's so prevalent here, okay? And what's so beautiful about it is that fruity and floral vibe uh, mixes so naturally and so beautiful with tobacco. 
and it's very hard to find good tobacco fragrances, honestly. I mean, uh, you hear the usual suspects, but some of them have weaknesses. You know, you hear people talk about Herod and Parfums de Marley's Herod, and you hear all these other tobacco scents that get brought up, and many of them have inherent weaknesses to me, and I have many of them. I love many of them. I love tobacco. It's one of my favorite notes in perfumery. Ever since I realized uh, that tobacco was used in perfume, when I first heard that, when I was first getting into the hobby, you know, a decade ago or whatever it was, I was like, tobacco in perfume? Uh, that doesn't seem to make any sense. How does how does tobacco and perfume go together? Like, I didn't understand at the time, you know what I mean? Um, and then slowly, once you start to kind of understand notes and accords and you kind of smell different versions of tobacco fragrances, some can be fresher, some can be the tobacco leaf green, some can be dry tobacco, you know, some can be sweetened tobacco, cherry tobacco, honey tobacco. There's all these tobaccos that you can kind of smell. And I found that I really, really enjoy tobacco when it's mixed with osmanthus. There's just something about that combination that seems very magical to me. Uh, and I think it's because the osmanthus does have little fruity touches, which tobacco has fruity touches as well. Actually, tobacco absolute, real tobacco absolute, is said to be one of the most complex fragrance molecules your nose can smell. It has something like 300 scent profiles in, you know, Tobacco Absolute. It, it, it can smell so, like such a vast array, excuse me, so deep, um, so much depth, and it changes and it evolves and it depends on how it's all mixed together. And, and I just love tobacco. Unfortunately, living in Texas, there's very few times where I can wear tobacco, you know. Um, it's very hard to wear tobacco scents in the uh, heat of summer. I always think of them in fall or winter, but, you know, like right now, um, it's been in the 60s, 70s, it almost hit 80, and it's, uh, December 8th, you know, so I know technically winter starts in a week and a half or whatever it is, but it's December 8th, I mean, I should be able to wear these, and, and I'm having a hard time, so I love it, but I, I really get a short season where I get to wear these type of scents, so I really try to cherish it, and, um, this fragrance, there was something that was bothering me. And the reason that I took so much time wearing this multiple times, and you can see I've put a hell of a dent in this little atomizer just wearing it to bed a couple times, um, is that this fragrance reminded me of a couple fragrances I'm going to show you. One in particular is a very hyped unicorn. I'll call it a unicorn because it basically is a unicorn at this point. It's a discontinued vintage fragrance from the house of Donna Karen. Donna Karen gets zero love in Fragcom. Um, and rightly so. Most of their stuff I think is shite. I think it's absolutely awful. But they had a gem. In the mid-90s in 1994, they released this fragrance. Have you ever seen this? I think this is supposed to be like a shifter on a car, although I think it looks like a gun. Um, you know, it looks like, uh, uh, maybe like Thor with his helmet on racing to the scene of, to be a hero. Uh, there's all kinds of things you could say this bottle looks like. It comes like this. This is the top. There's your atomizer. Um, and this is a, what is this? Donna Karen Cologne for Men, 75 mils. This is a 75 mil bottle. Okay, and I like the fact that light doesn't get in, so it's dark, keeps light out. You know, this this fragrance will hopefully last a long, long time. And it is. This is a vintage bottle. Uh, it's discontinued. They then kind of repackaged it. Some say reformulated it into something called Fuel for Men, um, which I've never smelled that version, but I, I hear people do say it's it's a little bit different. But these two fragrances share a little bit of similarities. The similarities are spices tobacco, and suede. This is a bigger suede fragrance than this. And I wouldn't be able to say that if I did not wear this multiple times already. You know, I've worn this to bed a couple times now. So I know that the suede accord that opens up that really feels within the first hour or two that this is a out and out suede fragrance. The osmanthus is really amped up. And I think that adds to that suede-like accord does give way to this more leathery, 
woody like dry down whereas this stays suede and tobacco and spices and um the x factor is there is a little bit of osmanthus in this as well okay so there's a touch of osmanthus in this um this feels a little bit more modern like maybe the woody molecules are more modern which it should i mean it's um whatever it is uh 20 uh 20 plus years later, so it should definitely feel uh, more modern, and it does. Um, the spiciness in in uh, in uh, Bar Carter Barcelona, um, the spiciness comes from uh, clary sage. There's clary sage absolute in here, and um, there's resins. So you get like peru balsam, a little bit of Mexican vanilla, um, some vetiver, patchouli, the dry down. The dry down of this from memory is basically this leathery patchouli with woods. So you get this woody, leathery patchouli feel. Um, there is a little bit of oak moss, oak moss absolute. And there's uh, Ethiopian frankincense in here as well. And that contributes to this spicy, woody, leathery dry down. Um, the wood note, interestingly enough, reminds me of a different fragrance. It doesn't remind me so much. There's not, I don't think there's, I don't know if there is a, uh, wood note in here, but if it is, it's very subdued. Maybe it's like this cedar or whatever, you know, maybe a slight touch of cedar. I don't know. I don't get very much woods from this. Um, but here in Carner, the difference is you get a big wood note. There's a, um, there's a big Virginia cedar note in here and it's very evident and like i said it's that's the one knock that you could make on this it doesn't smell very realistic it smells like you're smelling a synthetic designer woody molecule okay which is okay i can i can look past that because it's such a i think this is such a great fragrance and i've said for a long time i think um that john uh the fragrances that rodrigo flores rue did for john barbados like this Dark Rebel Rider, which I think is a very underrated leather perfume. Uh, and I think if you stuck this in a Roja Dove bottle and charged 500 bucks, people would not bat an eye. They would pay the $500 for this. Um, you know, but it feels like he never got a chance to really use these ultra high quality materials very many times. He did when he did Hubigant's uh, Fougere Royale, the remake in 2010, that him and Roja Dove actually did together. And, um, you know, it it came out amazing and it does smell high class, but most of the stuff that he was forced to do throughout the life of his career were cheaper fragrances. These John Barbados were cheap. I mean, they, they, they were cheap on the level of the ingredients they used. But if you've ever been to a John Barbados store, by the way, I mean, they've got expensive stuff. They $500, $800 jackets and shirts and stuff like that. Um... So the woody molecule is what kind of kept throwing me off. This, uh, I had to kind of come to a conclusion on, and, and there's no doubt there are some similarities. I just want to get you in the ballpark so you know what to expect from a fragrance like this. The woody molecule, though, is almost a dead ringer for Costume National Ohm. Now, this is pour ohm, Costume National Pour Ohm um, Parfum. This is supposed to be the Parfum. The guy I bought it from did not write Parfum on here, though. So maybe he gave me the one from 2009, and I don't know. But I think I ordered the Parfum version, uh, which came out in 2020. And it's grapefruit, bergamot, cardamom, patchouli, cinnamon, vetiver, musk, sandalwood, and labdanum. And um, there are resins in Sandor 70. There's peru balsam and, like I said, vanilla. Um, and there's patchouli and frankincense and um you know it's that woody note for some reason that tends to bring the fragrances together with cinnamon okay um and so that woody note just reminds me of each other for whatever reason if you like costume national pour Homme, this is very good modern perfume this is very good modern perfume and even though these are not super expensive i think you can find 100 mil bottles of this for I don't know, 100 bucks at discounters, maybe less, maybe 80. Um, you know, I don't think you're going to get charged an arm and a leg, but it um 
it feels like Rodrigo Flores Rue got to make something that had high quality materials and it, and it really does shine. This punch is way above its weight class. If this was in a Parfums de Marly bottle, um, people would pay three, four hundred bucks and not bat an eye. Not that I think Parfums de Marly is a good house, but I'm just saying it would be much higher price. No one would care. If this was in a Roja Dove bottle, same thing. You know, people would pay the higher price for this. It smells higher quality. It smells like the ingredients are better than what you're used to smelling in John Varvato's fragrances from Rodrigo Flores Rue. So, uh, interestingly enough, it is a fragrance and a house that I hardly ever hear anyone talk about. So I wanted to do this quick hit video because, um, you know, these type of fragrances, these modern releases that really catch my attention are very rare. Usually, I think everything new is shite. Um, and while you could make the case that if you compare this to some of the vintages that I love, compare this to Givenchy Gentleman from 1974, the EDT, the patchouli one. Uh, with castorium and honey and you know, there's no comparison. It's gonna win Givenchy gentleman from 74 is gonna win every time Compare this to Balenciaga Poron from 1990. Balenciaga is gonna win every time um, You know compare it to Derby by Guerlain. Derby is gonna win every time. There's just no there's no comparison for me But that doesn't mean I don't want to stop being a discoverer I still want to discover I still want to learn and see what these houses are putting out and and make a memory imprint of the scent so I can reference it for future. Now, these are linked. Costume National Ohm for me and Carner Barcelona Sandro 70s are linked. Um, there is no tobacco in this, but the woody scent is linked. And so the tobacco and suede and osmanthus in these two is is linked for me now. So I like I like exploring these. I like putting my thoughts out there. I would love to know if I'm not the only one that thinks Carner Barcelona seems to be a really good house. They seem to be a house that if let's say you're not on a budget necessarily, but you're not someone that has uh, the the willpower to go hunt down you know all these vintage bottles and you know you don't want to spend time. Um, finding different versions and you're not into and collecting entire niche houses and that's not your thing. You just want a perfume that smells much better than the average mall scent, uh, but at a decent price, this house could very well be uh, a secret weapon for you because this is very well-made perfume, extremely well-made, modern perfume. Um, it does have a vintage tinge to it though, like I said, it reminds me of a fragrance from 20 plus years ago. Um, but, and, and even some of the notes say vintage. So like Italian bergamot, vintage jasmine, absolute, Chinese osmanthus absolute, Bulgarian rose essence, clary sage absolute, uh, Virginian cedar wood, Virginian cedar wood, peru balsam, Mexican vanilla extract, Patchouli Essence, Vetiver Essence, Ethiopian Frankincense Extract, Oak Moss Absolute. So Vintage um, Jasmine Absolute. Uh, so there is a little bit of this vintage vibe to it. And on the back, it says, Carner Barcelona uses the highest grade and ethically sourced ingredients when creating its fragrances. And it does really smell that way. Um, I think because the house doesn't give off this posh vibe, it's not in a La Cord box, um, you know, I think maybe they get overlooked in FragCom. If you're someone that trusts your nose and not your eyes, or if you're someone that trusts your nose and not your what you read, what the you know market copy says, that they you know source the rarest uh, sperm whale ambergris from the Antarctic, and you know it 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 was stolen from King Henry the twelfth, uh, that he was going to grate them on its his eggs two hundred and fifty years ago, and now they're using it in your perfume, and so you got to pay five grand for it. If those stories don't influence you and you use this, check this house out, man. I'm telling you, it's it's worth a sniff. I'd love to know your thoughts. Thank you for the support. Um, give me ideas on videos for the one year anniversary. I think that would be kind of cool. And um, yeah, if you guys have experience with Sandor 70s or the House of Carner Barcelona, leave it in the comments. So thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.